Quantinium <laughs> got a $300 million deal or investment. Uh, uh, what's going on here? Yeah, you know, 300 million is going to buy you a lot of anything except maybe one share of NVIDIA. But uh, <laughs> the, uh, they, they did get uh, a $300 million raise. It's uh, a new investment round. And the uh, lead investor was uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, Missouri, Amgen, and uh, Honeywell were all in on it. And those are all uh, uh, in some type of relationship with uh, Quantinium. Of course, Honeywell is, you know, half owner of the company. Uh, uh, Mitsui's got a uh, distribution agreement with Honeywell, Honey, with uh, Quantinium for uh, Japanese and Asia Pacific markets. So uh, JP, JP Morgan Chase has run a lot of different uh, quantum research uh, projects on the uh, Quantinium H series quantum computers. So uh, they're kind of a natural to, uh, to, to be in. Uh, Quantinium, was, if you remember, was formed back in. 2021, and Pat and I spent a lot of time writing about it. So it's a spinoff of Honeywell and uh, uh, Cambridge, a merger of Honeywell and, and uh, Cambridge Quantum Computing in the UK. And uh, so they've got kind of a full stack. They've raised the total of the, uh, since they've been formed, uh, this makes 620, 25 million in funding and gives them a, a pre money evaluation of 5 billion. So, so they're doing pretty good. Yeah. And uh, they'll be using the money for uh, a lot of different things. Uh, uh, they're going to be working on their uh, roadmap. They've got an eight series uh, quantum computer, and they've got uh, five different series in it. Right now, they're on H2. So they're going to be using some of this money for uh, uh, continuing development on the H3, H4, and, and even the H5, I think. So. Uh, also, some of the money is going to be work, used for um, working on uh, error correction, which is really important. Uh, Honeywell is doing, or um, Quantinium is doing uh, some really good work in error correction. So, so I'm looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, how this is going to turn out. And, and uh, I'm expecting, you know, sometime this year, uh, we're going to see some interesting uh, announcements from them. And uh, so, uh, just wait and see what happens. It's a good deal. Yeah, it's an incredible amount of money. Yeah. Um, you know, you look at the uh, the bank that um, some of these other startups like INQ are sitting on. Um, gosh, Rigetti, that was a freaking nightmare. They, I think, probably paid more money to their investment bankers than uh, they actually got out of funding. Um, I'm being obnoxious, of course, but... Uh, it was a really bad round, uh, given the, you know, the the degree of challenge they had with their their SPAC offering, and then you you have IBM, who's probably spending more money than any of them. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a educated guess, um, and it's going to be interesting to see what what you know folks like Google and Microsoft and AWS and you know you've got Atom Computing that that is is knocking it out with a radically a different type of of atomic structure and and materials too. So yeah, I'm excited to see what uh, what they do too. Hey, can I ask a, can I ask a question on this? And it's a larger question around. Thanks. Uh, it's really a larger question around quantum in large, and it's it, just as an outsider who doesn't track quantum. It seems like there's like you said a pet. There's a lot of money going into quantum. But it feels like the horizon is a little bit further out. Is this a sign of how big and how revolutionary quantum is going to be over time? Or is this a, you know, kind of trend that caught fire or some other viral way? Well, I'll you know, give you first whack at this. Go ahead. No, no, no. I, yeah, you take first whack at this, yeah. please. I was say, you know, a lot of the money right now is being uh, consumed by AI, of course. But, uh, you know, quantum has got a spare share of it. And the problem, the problem with quantum basically is um, you need to be able to scale up qubits to do some really interesting work. You need to get to probably a million qubits to, to, to really attack the big problems. And what's holding it back is the fact that uh, these qubits are very sensitive to environmental conditions. Uh, it, it, errors are created very easily and you need to correct them. Uh, one of the problems with, with 
on them is that uh, uh, in terms of error correction is that you can't uh, you can't look at something uh, in a qubit to see what its state is without distort destroying the state. Mm -hmm. So they're they're working around that with logical qubits. They take a lot of physical qubits and, and make one qubit out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the the problem is, you know, we're probably five, six, seven, eight, maybe ten years away from really doing the big stuff. Yeah, I mean, I I know about half as much. Um, oh, sorry, I know like ten percent as much as Paul. But I have to tell you, I'm I'm more optimistic that that the time frame is five years when it will be able to do something that is better than on a on a classical computer. Mm -hmm. uh, probably a good place to. I mean, if IBM delivers, I mean, IBM literally put out a ten year ten year roadmap for quantum, mm -hmm. and I mean. First of all, it's weird that a uh, not weird, but it's unique that a research group would put out a roadmap at all. Mm -hmm. But they did that for quantum, and they've hit every one of their milestones for the past five years, or close to hitting their milestones. So when they put out a ten-year roadmap, I've got to give the IBM team some credibility uh, on, on on this, and, and it's pretty uh, amazing on the the space constraints uh, that that they put out there. Uh, how they're blending their understanding of some silicon technologies and interconnect technologies to be able to pull together uh, different uh, uh, different systems uh, together. Man, someone should do a quantum computing for dummies book. Yeah. Well, what, one of the, just let me give you an idea of where we're at in terms of status. Uh, one of the things that uh, quantum is trying to match up with classical computing and what can a classical computer do that quantum can't do? And there's a lot of things, most everything. Quantum can't match what a classical computer does. Uh, so when you run things on a quantum computer, you want to validate it by running something on a classical to get a match, a comparison. Mm -hmm. But right now we're at the point where we've got enough qubits that you can't run things on a classical computer uh, it's not big enough to, to match up with uh, to determine what what the real answer might be. So so we're getting into a point of you know we're we're almost there doing things better than classical computers, and I think we'll see that uh, in some cases this year.